Good day, everyone. I have a delicious Costa coffee on this beautiful fall day while I tell you all about the video you're about to see with Everett, who is the race director or co-race director for this year's World's Toughest Mudder. Everett. Everett is the race director for this year's World's Toughest Mudder, and we are going to go over everything that he's allowed to tell me before this year's event. Let's get into it. Away we go. Okay, my man. Here we are. World's Toughest Mudder 2024 in Orlando, Florida. What city are we calling it? We're calling it Central Florida. Central uh, Florida. Sure. Why not? It's between Orlando and Tampa, uh, a little bit south. So Okay. Clear Springs Ranch. Clear Springs Ranch. Are you currently there? I'm I'm currently in my apartment. I'm I'm heading down uh, next week. We're sending the the first of the team down on Thursday. And what city do you live in? I live in New York. Uh, and have you always been based there? I was born in Australia. Uh, if that wasn't a giveaway, but uh, I've been here the last six and a half years. Tough Mudder's old headquarters were just in downtown Brooklyn, so I uh, I moved over for them. Um, I feel like I met you. Did I meet you when you first came to Tough Mudder? I feel like I've known you a while. Yeah, it would have. I mean, first World's Toughest I was at was Atlanta. Um, so if I didn't meet you before then, I definitely met you then. And the first Atlanta year, was that 17 or 18? 18. Oh, my goodness. So we, wait, we were here 18 and 19? Yes. 18, 19 in Atlanta. Then we went to Laughlin, Atmore, Alabama. Tw Right, Dallas. twenty was supposed to be twenty was supposed to be Texas, but it didn't happen. So we were Laughlin, then at more Alabama. At more Alabama, last year was Dallas. We finally made it back to Texas. Right, it's and such then... a blur, dude. <laughs> Tell me about it. You could have told me we were in at more last year, and I would have been like, "That sounds right." Yeah, that was well. The fact that Laughlin was the comeback year after a year out of everything, I mean, that one was, that was a blur. At more, I don't know. It was last week. It was three years ago. It was... <laughs> How many events are you usually at, like, for the season? Uh, for the season, for me, I mean, 2021, I was on the road for 160 days of the year. Um, this year, I've been... A lot more desk bound, but still made it out to a few events. Um, so what is your current title? Director of live events. Director of live and, events. And race director of World's Toughest Mother. Okay. What was it when you started? Operations manager in 2018. Okay. Titles, titles, titles. Yeah. Still busy. Just <laughs> just different things keeping me busy. So this year, we just got the uh, – you just sent me over the elite list. I'm excited about that. Um, how up-to-date is that, by the way? I would say within the last 48 hours. Oh, okay. Oh. Um. So, have the have you guys released some of these puzzle pieces yet? I think I saw one. There are, I don't know if I meant to say the total number, but I, I will because I wasn't told not to. There are going to be 16. <laughs> um, I think you can guess by the size of them there's going to be a few of them, but close to half of them would be out there by now, scattered around somewhere. Um. Well, if it's going to be out by the end of this week, you and I can talk about obstacles, right? Because the whole thing will be done by – when will the whole thing be out by? Uh, I mean, it's all clues in the map anyway. So even if you put it together, there's still some work to do to figure out what the uh, what the course is going to look like for this year. Okay. So what can you and I – what can you and I safely talk about? We can talk about a five-mile course – 20 obstacles, uh, seven of those with penalties. Um, we're, we're in Florida. There's 
no hiding the fact that it's going to be a flatter course than when we were in Vegas or when we were in Atlanta. So I'm expecting some some quick laps, but it's also going to be brutal. There's sand, there's mud. It's it's world's toughest. It's never going to be easy. Well, Atmore was flat. Yeah. So it was Laughlin, but I mean, Laughlin was running on a beach for, <laughs> for 24 hours, so that couldn't have been fun. Yeah, the only hill I remember for Artmore, or sorry, for Laughlin was right out of the start line, there was a hill. Yeah. Well, why don't you and I go ahead and warn people who will ignore it anyway? You and I can say right now that people will either forget or choose to ignore that the amount of mileage they have for the first half of the race will not equal the mileage they have for the second half of the race. I'm sure some people are going to walk in with a very solid game plan and I will, I'll pay respect to those people. I think there's some people that are going to get found out by that logic. I think a lot of people <laughs> but it never, but it, but it, it, best after, after lap one and think they're going to go on and win the thing. Um, and we know what happens there. So yeah, it's it gets exponentially harder. I mean, the the weather, even just the pitch black darkness and the the mind games that plays um, running through. So that's all part of the fun of a twenty four hour endurance race. Yeah. So what will happen is the race will begin. The obstacles will not be open. That means you go faster. Yeah. The next several hours, some of the obstacles will open, so you will still go relatively faster at yep. some point all of the obstacles will open you will not be as quick you will be going in and out of water your body will begin to shut down over various levels so uh do not be overconfident would be my advice to those new people listening to this podcast enjoy That's, all of it enjoy yeah. all of it but do not be overconfident no and if you again you're hitting penalties every lap you're you're adding mileage that we do not count um <laughs> very valuable mileage. Um so you said seven with penalties. Will these be distance penalties? Will these be stationary penalties? Can you can you speak to that? There'll there'll be a mix, definitely. Um there are a couple that you will end up yeah, on your step count at the end of the the race being like, no, I definitely ran four miles further and, and you're not seeing it. I think we'll try to mix it up as much as possible. Um, different physical challenges and, again, some mind tricks that we can play as well. Let's go over some of the basics, though, because people don't read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well aware. Especially us veterans – including myself, that are like, ah, I'll just show up. So, for example, when is the race start time this year? Oh, you froze again. Oh, uh, sorry. Hopefully we're good. You, can you hear me? Did you hear my question, though? You know I didn't. Everett. By the way, it is Everett and not Everett, correct? It is. It is Everett. Uh, which we don't know in America. We don't know any Everts. We know some Everts. Yeah, uh, they don't know it in Australia either. It's um, a gift handed down from my Estonian heritage um, and one that I have to explain at Starbucks every time I go. Why don't you go with another name at Starbucks? Okay, well, I'll let you in on a secret. I also use Jack very regularly. I would go with Eddie. Just that's what I'm <laughs> thinking, Eddie. You know, and then even if they spell it wrong, E. One D, two Ds, Y, I, E, doesn't matter. Yeah. No one messes up, Jack. It's it's worked enough. I like Jack. Jack's that's a good yeah. one. Um, I have an extremely common name, and I should probably think about when I go to a busy Starbucks because it is very often they just yell out Matt and somebody grabs a drink and it's gone yeah. and then it's not, and then it's not mine. Sometimes there's an upgrade. Sometimes somebody takes the coffee that was mine and I get something better, but sometimes I don't, and you don't know until you sip it. So anyhow. Uh, Evert, because uh, I don't think I've ever called you by your name. I've seen you a hundred times. We shake hands, but yep. now, now I'm going to start calling you by. Now we'll do that annoying thing that they teach you in sales where I just say your name every time. How about that? So are you with me so far? 
ever. Sorry. Okay. So first question. Yes. For veterans who aren't paying attention, what time does this year's race begin? I will lead off with just a little backstory. This year, we okay. don't have to worry about daylight savings, which anyone that ran last year, that, that was annoying to everyone. Um, so this year, we are holding a regular 5K that's going out at 8 a.m. Uh, there will be people running the course. I'm hoping a lot of the uh, the pit crew get involved and get to run a lap and understand what their, their athletes are doing. So that's going to go off at 8 o'clock. World's Toughest kicks off at 1 p.m., it goes through the start line closes at 1 p.m. on Sunday and anyone on course will have until 2.30 to complete a lap, but we will be completely course closed at 2.30. All right. So let's right. break that down. Let's break that down for the for the new folks. You must start your last lap at 1 p.m. Are we in the Eastern Standard Time? Yes. Yeah. Eastern. <laughs> if you finish after 1 p.m., you cannot go out on another lap. If yep. you do finish... Prior to 1 p.m., as long as you come in the next time around, 90 minutes later, you yes. are okay. And that lap yep. counts. If you are on an active lap when the clock runs out, we do not give you partial credit. You just yep. slowly walk back for zero miles credit. Yep. Luckily, they can just walk back to the start line if they want at that point. You don't need to put yourself through the pain of of walking around the rest of the lap for, for no extra credit. But right. Yeah, there's two, and there's hard close. Yeah, there's no penalty for that. You just don't get counted, but you won't be DQ'd or anything. I think some people that got started as a rumor once because Spartan did it once. But yeah, you don't you're not penalized, you just don't get no. credit. So if there's a 5K already out there, how are our WTM obstacles going to be closed early on? So the 5K will get to do a lot of the same obstacles that we're putting out or with slight modifications of the world's toughest course. We're trying to give those people um, as much of an experience as possible. So they'll go out I had the the 5K, which is not a 5K as well. If you're going there expecting just a 5K, it's going to be closer to seven. Um, it's it's going to be value for money, uh, but they'll be hitting 16 obstacles. Um, out of the out of the 20 obstacles of of one form or another there may be slight modifications to it but they will be getting a, a hopefully a the next closest experience to what world's toughest is without needing to do it monotonously for 24 hours so my first lap as a world's toughest participant is to bypass the obstacles Well, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, well, I'm trying, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run at least one lap. I always do, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to lead you into discussing. Typically it's real simple. You got volunteers. They're just waving everybody by, right? Yep. You won't be able to do that this year because you'll have people on course. So we'll, again, with this 5k and them going out at 8am, we're only running 2000 people out. There's a hard cap on the the number of tickets. People will be off course by the time world's. Oh, starts. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's several hours really? later. I'm really? sorry. Forget forget what I just said. I'm sorry. This is but this is why we ask these questions yep. for those like me that don't put two and two together. Okay, they'll be done. So you'll just wave everybody by, and then based on whether it's the day before or at the briefing the night before, you'll typically announce the rolling layout once upon a time you didn't you just open certain ones but now you do typically announce this one's yep. open at 11 this one's open at one in the morning is that is that the case yeah we'll do a rolling so first obstacles will open at two and then on the hour we'll release a number of them the course will be fully open and active before midnight before midnight um will there be special black ops obstacles things that only open at sundown and open back up close down at sunrise we i mean without giving too much away on that as well definitely something we've done in the past something that we'll look at again um we'll yeah look at some tweaks that we can do throughout the the night um i think we also want to make sure that we're providing an even playing field as well um i think in the past we've sometimes modified things too much and then there's advantages and disadvantages to certain athletes. So we definitely don't want that. We want an even playing field for all 
all participants. We've got prize money on the line. Um, we know that people are, are looking for that. So I don't want to create something that's just luck of the draw of you were there at 137 and and unlucky for you, you have, you know, a different obstacle to the person that runs past 10 minutes later. So they turn on on the hour. Yes. And they'll stay on. Yes, we won't be we won't be closing. Once once we have 20 obstacles up and running, we'll have 20 obstacles at the close of 2:30. So there's no so there isn't necessarily something open just for black ops or could it be night ops or it could just be a variation maybe? I'm trying yep. not to make you tell me what it is, but uh variations would be more likely, but we'll have yeah, 20 obstacles running throughout. Can we talk about prize money for individuals and teams? Yeah, we can. So uh, men's and women's champions, it's $5,000 this year. For teams this year, it was increased. We have $8,000 on the line. Um, obviously, that's going to be sl split between a team. It's between two and four people, any makeup you have. If there's... You and a friend, and you think you're strong enough just as two, then you can split 4,000 each, um, but up to four people in a team as well. And explain what a team must do or not do. Yep, a couple of little tweaks here as well. Uh, first lap must be completed together, and last lap must be completed together. The last lap must be completed after 9 a.m., to qualify you as an official world's toughest finisher. Any lap in between can be any makeup you want. So you can go out by yourself. You can go out with a teammate and help each other for where you hit certain obstacles that, that it helps to have a teammate there. Um, but you could also look to, to rest and just flip one person at a time, go out for the fastest laps possible. Did I hear we changed that at one point? We used to have it that you needed a minimum of two out on course at all times. So that that's a shift this year. No, I thought we had the relay where it was just the one and one and you guys changed that so that it wasn't just a tag. It was always at least two. Did that we, not change? We we had that. Okay, we've, we've gone through where it was two person team, four person team. We've gone through where you need a minimum of two people regardless. So for a two-person team, they did every single lap together. This year, with the intention, I think, of of just making it more accessible to as many people as possible, is if you've got four people and you're like, we, we are entering into the world of endurance, we think we're pretty good, but I'm not running 75 miles myself, but you've got a team of four people that are confident running 50 miles, uh, we're looking for some some really strong results in the team category. So let's talk about, you said 5,000 for first, how much for second and third? I know this and it's 2,500, but I have a fear in my mind that I'm going to say the wrong thing. And when we I don't want you to say the wrong thing. I can, I, can, I can pull up the Zen desk for you if you'd like. Um, okay. So for men's and women's overall champions, first, second, and third is 5,000, 2,500 and 1,000. And then for teams, it's 8,000, 4,000, and 2,000. And then there'll also be age group awards, but not money, correct? Yes. Age group awards, no prize money on offer unless you happen to be your age group and an overall champion. Obviously, you'll still you'll qualify for the, the prize money on the overall and then um, also your, your age group. Okay, see, I thought we changed that as well. There was there was a point where you did announce if, say, Trevor was second place yep. overall, he also won his age group, but I thought we took that away because then that sort of defeats the purpose of the elite podium, no? I wrote the rule book this year, and <laughs> I also had a heavy hand in it last year, and I swear if I'm going to confuse myself in whether it's 2024 or 2023, um. While we're on the call, I can confirm this. Also, the good thing is when we do the briefing on site, these are the questions I'm going to get asked, and I'm going to right. have them far more put together. That's okay. Well, listen, we'll, we're going to put this out, and we'll just say, 
subject to change, make sure you show up to the briefing <laughs> on yes. Friday and or Saturday morning. So um, that's I, fine. I double checked all of my answers. It's okay. Um, but yes, I will confirm all of that well before the briefing that occurs on site, which we're going to be doing on the Friday uh, at 4 p.m. And then there'll be a makeup on Saturday at 10 a.m. for any anyone that wasn't able to to attend. What what time can I begin setting up my pit on Friday? Uh, on Friday, we'll be open from 9 a.m. Uh, so you can head in early. We're also going to be there all day. Um, we're not closing the pit till 6 p.m. So if you if you have a very big setup and you want plenty of time, I know we'll also get some people that walk in, drop a, a couple of coolers off and, and head off for a good night's sleep at the hotel before 24 hours uh, out in Clear Springs Ranch. But there's no... Um... Everybody shows up at the same time, though, because at one point, I think it was like elite people first. That's so, <laughs> Matt, you and I have been doing this too long. Um, in, <laughs> in many years, we've done it many different ways. We used to do it as a free-for-all, um, yes. and people would run in and just grab. So now we have pit pre-selection. So uh, pit pre-selection does open first for elites and contenders and then open for for everyone else after that we're, we're currently open for elites uh we're opening i think very soon for contenders it might even be today or tomorrow um but everyone will have sort of their pit pre-selected so you can show up whenever you would like you know where you're going to be camped out um so we've sort of taken away that element of it that people don't have to be lined up and then sprinting to to scavenge a spot you know tearing people's hair out while they do it so if the 5K starts in the morning, it's probably better to like come after they like, right? Because if they're going to be there super early, then we should show up at at what time? Starting when? I'm sorry, you said it opened. Uh, we'll open on Saturday morning at seven um, for first wave going out at eight a.m. We have a clear separation between the festival area and the pit area, so people that are competing in worlds will be able to to head through and go to the designated area um, where they can spend their time setting up. So starting if, at, starting at what time exactly? 7am 7, 7 will be open on Saturday. Not 9am, 7am you could, you could start to set up. Yes. That's 9am on Friday. Sorry for, for checking on Friday. 9am on Friday, 7am on Saturday. Okay. You and I have been doing this too long. Yes. That's why I'm so confused. We also tinker with it every year so, <laughs> so you get lost between between years but yeah I, this I, year with the we used to open later just because we weren't kicking off until midday or depending on what time we we chose to start it off but with this year having the early event anyway registration is going to be open so we'll we'll open up early um for, for anyone from worlds that wants to turn up early as well okay We've had some different changes throughout the year with penalties. Will penalties be this time um, at the race center? Will there be incentives at the race center like there was last year or the last two years? So, well, I mean, we, we got rid of certain things where you could like Electric Avenue um, and we will have at the race center every time, you know, you're completing a lap after your fifth, and you get an obstacle uh, bracelet for that, for an obstacle bypass. All of that will still be handled from the race center. Penalties themselves will be at the obstacle itself. Um, so we'll have either penalty areas or penalty loops set up straight after anyone were they to fail um, or require adaptive athlete bypass or anything like that. All penalties are completed at the, at the obstacle. Okay. So how many miles before I get my first obstacle bypass on your fifth lap 25 miles you'll get your first wristband and then you'll get a wristband every lap after that um and then you could use them all at once in one big lap you can use them every time up to you to learn what's going to be fastest for you absolutely i think by 25 miles unless you did a lot of laps before the obstacles were open i think by 25 miles you should have a pretty good idea of which obstacle you never want to do again. Um, 
and maybe it's which penalty you never want to do again. So they'll have plenty of time by the time they start getting the obstacle bypasses to know where they want to use them. So you said there's not electric avenue. Is there electric obstacles? I don't know if I say too much there. <laughs> there could be. Okay. Um, I think it, let's let's but, just say at, at a minimum there will be one electric obstacle. Okay. And we know there'll be water at some point. Will there be complete water submersion? Submersion. Um, <clears throat> only if you're falling off funky and, and fully dunking yourself under, there's, there's no necessary like swim across or, um, obviously with Florida being a lot flatter, there's, there's no cliff like we had in the past at Vegas. Um, there's a couple of mounds at the venue, but it's definitely a lot flatter than, than a Vegas venue. So, um, obviously we always say it, um, and Sean says it at the start line every time if, if you can't swim, don't go, don't in, the go in the water. But <laughs> unfortunately, with that, uh, you will be using up either an obstacle bypass or a or a penalty for it. But uh, anything with full submersion, let's say like a funky, is going to have a penalty associated anyway. Got it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to know more about this year's World's Toughest Mudder, there is another video. Me and Jason Rulo, where we give experience from two men who've been to every single World's Toughest Mudder since 2012. So go check that out. Love you. Miss you. Mean it. I've got to run.